Robo Papa. So I printed this base um, enclosure where it will hold the Raspberry Pi, the battery, and the charger from Adafruit. And I created this uh, small PCB that takes the power from the charger for the battery and connects to uh, the Raspberry Pi and then the screen module, which will come later on the top um, section. Um, so for now, I'll just, while it's printing, and you probably can hear in the background, um, the second layer of this, I'll attach this um, module, this PCB, over here. That way I can connect to the Raspberry Pi. I'll connect the HDMI cable that I have over here and prepare everything to mount the second um, layer, which the monitor or the screen's PCB over here will come in and then the HDMI cable will connect from here to here. So we have the enclosure over here open, that way we can see how we connected everything. On the bottom part we have the Raspberry Pi Model A+, Plus, where I created a header that attached the wires that will connect to the action buttons like the D-pad and the A and B button. We also have the HDMI already connected as well as the power cable that is connected to a custom PCB that I created. The custom PCB is being powered by a battery, a 3.7 battery that's get boosted by the Adafruit boost uh, PCB to 5 volts. That 5 volts is actually powering the um, monitor with this PCB. Um, I desoldered the VGA component as well as the audio component, that way I can lose some height. I hot glue the HDMI cable, that way it will not move around and be more stationary. As I said, this uh, Adafruit PCB is actually boosting the 3.7 to 5 volts, which powering the Raspberry Pi Model A uh, as well as the monitor. And you can see by the light over here, the power is going in through the custom PCB to the Raspberry Pi. So here's the <coughs> here's the um, case after building the, the second part, uh, printed it yesterday. And um, the cable, the HDMI cable goes from inside. This is the PCB for the monitor that's connected over here. And all the wires from the Raspberry Pi coming out. Um, there's the power button in here and then the charger for the Adafruit power um, PCB uh, from here. That, that way you can uh, see that how it will look like. Um, also we have the access, access to the um, USB from the Raspberry Pi in case that we need to put um, a mouse or a keyboard um, or Ethernet. Um, that way you can uh, work the uh, main game. So the next thing is, uh, as always, make sure that um, it's still working. Um, you can see that the light from inside is actually turned on and now the monitor is coming back up. So that's that works. So the next thing is that I will print the, the base for the, the monitor as well as the um, PCBs, the custom PCBs for the buttons. For example, this will be the, the D-pad that will come over here and then we'll have the button, the other buttons, the A and B button and um, the pause and everything that will come probably like over here. That way we can accommodate for the cables. All right, let's do that now next. So I created an enclosure for the monitor and I put screws on the sides. That way you can actually attach to both of them. The ribbon is going and connected to the PCB for the monitor and all the cables that it's needed are coming out of um, the hole over here, the cavity. I created another um, enclosure that will be for the buttons. Um, the cavity over here will be for uh, the ribbon, that way we don't put pressure on it. And this cavity will be for uh, the wires. The wires will go through here and then we'll have like room to put the PCBs for the buttons that the wires will be connected. And then there will be another part on the top where we will create the, the D-pad and just the regular buttons uh, pressing. So. I will go and start soldering uh, the wires um, to the, the buttons 
and I'll show how that progress next. All right, so I finished over here to install the, the buttons and um, with all the wiring and just going to give it like a final test before um, printing out the enclosure that will come on the top with the D-pad and just the buttons with the A and B and then all the other uh, buttons that um, the mine needs. So let's fire it up and see if, uh, once again, this is like a test. Make sure that it's working. So here it is, it's uh, basically loading um, the, the MIME, the way I apply, and it will automatically will start the um, MIME emulator. So let it just run a little bit. Alright, so starting you can select the game I was debating and if I should actually create an enclosure I like it like seeing all the wires like this um, but I think I will go and just create a, an enclosure with a d-pad and the buttons over here um, there's already the mounting screws over here already like installed um, so I'll just be able to screw it up so the game starts over here let's see if we can do a test of playing so this is like entering the credits entering and now we're actually starting the game so if we go left right firing up down and the second fire button seems like everything is working um, as we want it so I'll go ahead now and print the enclosure over here and then we'll see how the final um, game or the, the game console is actually looking so here's the final product with uh, all the casing and the buttons and it seems like everything is working um, so let's start it and while it, this is actually loading um, I'll explain a little bit what, what we did. So we have the Raspberry Pi uh, Model A Plus inside with a battery pack uh, from Adafruit. That way you can actually charge as well as giving power to the screen and the Raspberry Pi. We use a 7 inch uh, screen over here and that's what we see over here. That screen is actually supporting this board. Um, so to minimize the height and um, components I actually desoldered the um, VGA component as well as the audio and I removed the power and connected directly uh, the power directly to the pins over here. Then I had an HDMI cable that goes inside to the Raspberry Pi. And then I connected the Raspberry Pi with c cables or wires to these buttons and used the RetroPi to actually set it up. So it seems like everything is working and we can go back and forth and try to play a game, this one doesn't exist Come on. so while this one is loading I connected the the USBs actually exposed over here and we have the cable over here that we can connect and the power cord is right over here So you can see the game is actually loading and everything seems like to work. You can actually hear the button clicks going through. Uh, one thing that I learned from this um, is that the screen was too big for my printer and I had some issues to uh, actually print it out. Um, so sometimes actually bigger is not better. Um, and because it was a bigger screen I had like to, to have the board as well so that add a little bit more volume to the uh, the overall build and the height of it but it was a great experience um, I definitely recommend it to anyone that wants to do that at home um, it will teach you a lot so let me know what you guys think and please don't forget to leave a comment below um, if you have any questions or recommendations 
or even if you want to um, recommend how you will actually approach this problem. And as always, please subscribe. It helps a lot. Uh, see you next week.